Hello, this is the Gospel Truth Ministry. I am Rob Glass, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your day and joining me as we make these videos and share them with you. The main purpose of this ministry is to share the gospel message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody should hear and needs to hear the Word of God every single day. And so here at the Gospel Truth Ministry, it is my aim to make sure that you hear the truth of God's Word. Amen. But now that you're here, if you're already a follower, I thank you for your subscription and I thank you for your thumbs ups and your shares. But if you're new to this channel, and this is the first time you're ever seeing this ministry, whether it be on Facebook or on YouTube, please hit subscribe, click the notification bell, and remember to give it a thumbs up. That's how we get these videos out to each and every one of you or to as many people as possible. Word of mouth, good old fashioned word of mouth is the best in sharing it on the internet is word of mouth, amen. So I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. If you could just do that for me, I very much would appreciate it. And after all, sharing the message, you're sharing in this ministry and you're storing up for yourself treasure in heaven. Amen. So we are in chapter 7 now in our journey through the book of Revelation. But chapter 6 and verse 17, it ended with a question. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? And the great day of his wrath that has come is referring to the day of the Lord or the day of God's judgment. And who is able to stand? But before we dive in and discuss all of those who are able to stand, let me just say this. I can tell you who will not be able to stand when it comes to the day of the Lord or the day of God's judgment. That is, anyone who is an unbeliever, no matter how strong this person appears to be physically, it doesn't matter. They will be no match for the Almighty God of the universe, and they will not be able to stand against Him or His judgments, period. And it doesn't need to just be the tribulation period. No mere man, no mere mortal, is going to be able to stand against the Almighty and expect to win. But those of us that are protected by the Lord, we will be enabled to stand, whether on earth, as stated in Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, or in God's presence in heaven, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. And I said that as a little precursor to the fact that I am going to break this chapter up into the two categories that it is so easily found when you open up the Bible yourself and see what is going on. And chapter 7 forms what is best described as the, I would say, the interlude between the sixth seal and the seventh seal and answers the question that is stated at the end of chapter 6. Who is able to stand? There will be two very distinct groups that are going to survive this very overwhelming display of power from the wrath of the Lamb a.k.a. Jesus Christ himself, on the day of the Lord or the day of God's judgment. So let's just get into it. Let's just dive right on into it. Um, let's just hit this thing running. The very first group that we're going to talk about of the two groups is the sealed of Israel, Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. The 144,000 are first mentioned in Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, though, where it says, Then I heard the number of those who were sealed. This is the Apostle John speaking. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Now, I didn't, I'm not going to sit here and, and name every, uh, every one of the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12,000. That would just be absolutely redundant. But there are going to be 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel that are going to be supernaturally sealed by God. Hence, you have 144,000 people saved supernaturally of the tribes of Israel. 
And so how you would answer the question, or how one answers the question, who are the 144,000, truly depends on which interpretive approach you take to the book of Revelation. The futurist approach, which I consider to be the best, interprets the 144,000 sealed of Israel as being a literal event. When taken at face value, Revelation chapter 7 verse 4 seems to speak of the 144,000 actual living people during the end times of the tribulation. For me, that's just the most literal sense. Nothing in the passage leads to interpreting the 144,000 as anything but a literal number of Jews. 12,000 taken from every tribe of the children of Israel, according to verses 5 through 8. So when taken at face value, Revelation chapter 7 verse 4 really seems to speak of actual people. I can't emphasize that enough. So I take the futurist approach, which I think is the absolute best approach. It is the most literal approach, and there's going to be 144,000 Jews supernaturally sealed to spread the word of God. More importantly, to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And you, my friend, need to hear that message if you are not in Christ. And if you are in Christ, it is good to get familiarized with it because the better we know how to share the gospel message, the better and more confident we will be when it comes to sharing the gospel message. These 144,000 Jews are sealed, which means they have, I believe, special protection from God, of God, by God, um, and they are kept safe from the divine judgments, from the wrath of the Antichrist. They can freely perform their mission during the tribulation. I believe that there is going to be something absolutely special about these 144,000 sealed that is going to allow them to share the gospel message of salvation almost without hindrance. And amen to that. It had been previously prophesied, though, that Israel would repent and turn back to God. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, Romans chapter 11, verses 25 through 27, and the 144,000 Jews seem to be a sort of first fruits, if we were to jump ahead to Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, of that redeemed of Israel. Their mission seems to be to evangelize the post-rapture world and proclaim the gospel during the tribulation period. And I said post-rapture world because I am a pre-trib rapture believer. You don't have to be a pre-trib rapture believer. You don't have to be a mid-trib uh, rapture believer. You don't even have to be a post-trib rapture believer. These 144,000 supernaturally sealed Jews, uh, 12,000 um, from each of the 12 tribes of Israel are going to go around and be supernaturally protected, I believe, um, during the tribulation period and share the gospel message around the world. Amen. So their mission seems to be to evangelize, as I'm going to state again, the post-raptured world and proclaim the gospel during the tribulation period, especially as we embark into the great tribulation period. Now keep that phrase in mind, the great tribulation period, because we're going to get into that further on in this message. As a result of their ministry, millions, a great multitude that no one can even count from every nation, tribe, people, and language will come to faith in Jesus Christ. And that's going to be mentioned in Revelation chapter 7, Verse 9. Much of the confusion regarding the 144,000, though, is a result of the false doctrine of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So now I'm going to take aim at the Jehovah's Witnesses here by design. Much of the confusion of the 144,000 is a result of 
false doctrines such as that of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Jehovah's Witnesses claim that 144,000 is a limit to the number of people who will reign with Christ in heaven and spend eternity with God. The 144,000 have what the Jehovah's Witnesses call the heavenly hope. Those who are not among the 144,000 will enjoy what they call the earthly hope, a paradise on earth ruled by Christ and the 144,000. It is true that there will be people ruling in the millennium with Christ, make no mistake. These people will be comprised of the church, such as believers in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. The Old Testament saints are going to be here, believers who died before Christ's first advent. So let me back up and say this one more time so that we are abundantly clear. <clears throat> it is true that there will be people ruling in the millennium with Christ. These people will be comprised of the church and Old Testament saints. Amen. And tribulation saints. And they, they, those are those who accept Christ during the tribulation period. So we have the church, believers in Jesus Christ. We have Old Testament saints, those who believed, who died before Christ's first advent. They believed in the Savior, the Messiah to come. Amen. And the tribulation saints is are those who accept Christ during the tribulation period. I hope I made that clear. But let's get back to it. Yet the Bible places no numerical limit on this group of people anywhere. Furthermore, the millennium is different from the eternal state, which will be established at the completion of the millennial period. At that time, God will dwell with us in the new Jerusalem. He will be our God and we will be his people. The inheritance promised to us in Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit will become ours and we will be co-heirs with Christ. So the 144,000 sealed in the book of Revelation are the 144,000 sealed Jews, Jews, 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel, who are going to be supernaturally protected when they go around the world proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. This is not going to be what the Jehovah's Witnesses would say are the 144,000 who will have the heavenly hope. No, this is 144,000 sealed of Israel who are going to supernaturally be protected and share the good news of Jesus Christ during the Great Tribulation period. So now that leads us to the second group. Now we've talked about the 144,000 supernaturally sealed to share the gospel message. Well, we might as well talk about part two of chapter seven and speak of the tribulation, the tribulation saints because they are the multitude that come out of the great tribulation. So the tribulation saints are quite simply saints living during the tribulation. Can't make it any easier than that, can we? I believe that the church will be raptured before the tribulation, as I've already stated. But the Bible indicates that a great number of people during the tribulation will place their faith in Jesus Christ. In his vision of heaven, the Apostle John sees a vast number, a countless number of these tribulation saints, amen, who have been martyred by the Antichrist. There before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. When John asks who they are, he is told, they, These are they who have come out of the Great Tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The tribulation will be a time of great trouble 
for the wicked because of God's judgments. It will also be a time of great persecution for the believers or saints because of the Antichrist's persecution, as you will see in later chapters. Daniel saw the Antichrist waging war against the saints and defeating them in Daniel chapter 7, verse 21. Of course, the saints' eternal salvation is secure. Daniel also saw that the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Daniel chapter 7, verse 22 and you can also use a, a, a central focus from Revelation chapter 14, verses 12 to 13. And we will eventually get to Revelation chapter 14. The tribulation saints, though, will hear the gospel from several possible sources. The key source, well, we're, well let's just do it. The first is the Bible, first and foremost. There will be many, many Many, many copies of the Bible laying around, left in this world, and when God's judgments begin to fall, many people are, are going to react by finding a Bible to see if the prophecies are being fulfilled. I mean, we, we tend to overlook this when it comes to the things that are going to happen after the rapture. Well, how are people going to hear the word? Well, there's going to be 144,000 supernaturally sealed Jews of Israel who are going to go around and witness the gospel message of Jesus Christ. But there is going to be a plethora of Bibles and materials lying around. People are going to be searching for answers. They're going to pick up a Bible. I have a few in front of me right now. They're going to pick up a Bible. They're going to jump right to Revelation and they're going to, by the divine act of God, they're going to read what's going on. And some of them, a lot of them, are going to be saved through that. So there's one scenario. Uh, when God's judgments begin to fall, people are going to be reacting to it. They're going to pick up a Bible. They're going to search the scriptures. And they're going to see if what they're seeing is being fulfilled. Many of the tribulation saints will also have heard the gospel from the two witnesses, and I'm jumping the gun, I'm getting a little bit ahead here, because the two witnesses, that the two famous witnesses that everybody has at least heard about, or many people have heard about um, at some point in their life, um, we haven't even gotten to that yet, because they are, I believe, first mentioned in Revelation chapter 11. So you're going to have people searching for answers by grabbing Bibles and start reading and the Holy Spirit revealing to them. You're going to also have people hearing the two witnesses at the very onset of the tribulation period, witnessing the gospel message. And the Bible says these two individuals will prophesy for 1,260 days or three and a half years and perform great miracles. And then there are the 144,000 Jewish missionaries who are redeemed and sealed by God during the tribulation period. So people are going to grab Bibles, people are going to hear the two witnesses, and you're going to have the 144,000 supernaturally sealed Jewish witnesses. So there's going to be a lot of people in really three major ways, at least three major ways that the gospel is going to get to the ears of those who need to hear it. And in my humble opinion, everybody needs to hear it, but that doesn't mean everybody is going to react to it. So there you go. Immediately following the description of their sealing in Revelation chapter 7, which is the current chapter that we are in, we read of the multitudes of tribulation saints, tribulation saints who are saved from every corner of the world as you can see in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, taking you right up to the end. The tribulation saints will serve the Lord, Jesus Christ, in the midst of desperate surroundings. There are going to be people who are coming to saving faith, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, proclaiming Him and declaring Him to be Lord. And they are going to have to do it in the most desperate of circumstances. We have glimpses of it right now in the world where people 
are coming to faith and living out their faith for Jesus. And they're paying for it with their lives. But everywhere on the planet during the tribulation is going to be a matter of life and death if you proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified and declare Him to be Lord, not only of your life, but Lord, period. It's it's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be over, overwhelming. And these people are going to be faithful to the end. Many of these believers will, in fact, die for their faith. I know I've already said it. It sounds like a broken record. But this is going to be the most perilous time in human history. These people are going to pay with their lives because of Jesus Christ. Amen. But in their death, these people will overcome. Where it says, they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Getting ahead of myself, you can't help it. And God will reward them. He who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Revelation chapter 7, verses 15 through 17. Think about that. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. We praise the Lord that the great day of trouble will also be a great day of grace. Even as God is meeting out his just punishment on an unbelieving world, he will be restoring Israel to faith and extending grace to all of those who believe, both Jew and Gentile. God has always been in the business of saving people, and that salvation will still be available during the tribulation. Don't wait until then, I urge you. Do not wait until the tribulation begins. However, receive Jesus now. Receive Jesus now. Tell the Lord you know that you're a sinner. You're bankrupt. There is no other name given to men under heaven by which we must be saved. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us need to be saved. But not all of us put our faith, hope, and trust into the only one who is qualified to redeem us and to save us. Put your faith and trust in the only one who can, and that is none other than Jesus Christ himself, the one who was slain from before the foundation of the world, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Until next time, this is the Gospel Truth Ministry. May God richly bless and keep each and every one of you.